Thinking of investing in Georgia and don't know where to start, do you want to grow a successful business in the beautiful country of Georgia? Well, I was in your situation four years ago when I visited this beautiful country as a tourist. I was impressed by the nature and uh, hospitable people of Georgia. Therefore, I end up investing and doing four different successful businesses in Georgia. This webinar is for you, whether you are six or seven figure entrepreneur who is looking for business opportunities overseas, or you are just trying to move with your family abroad, seeking a peaceful life among the nice people of Georgia. Make sure to watch the webinar to the end, because I am going to share with you my four years of experience. I'm going to share with you the lessons I have learned during four years of investing and doing business in this wonderful country. In addition, I will answer all of your questions, no matter how long will it take. So if you got any questions, ask me now in the chat box or comment below and I will consider answering your question in the upcoming videos. This is Nomad Entrepreneur First Master Class and it's me, Hussam Afifi. I'm here to show you how to invest in Georgia smartly. Well guys, I am not exaggerating if I said this webinar is going to change your life. It's going to change your point of view in business. It's going to change a lot of bad concepts, a lot of wrong concepts in doing business. It's going to change your point of view on definitely everything. I know there might some of you now thinking, Come on, man, it's not that important. It's, it's, it's not going to change my life. It's not going to change the money I have in my pocket. It's not going to increase the money in my bank account. I understand that. What I'm saying is I'm going to give away four years of my life between your hands, four years of experience in doing business, investing in Georgia going to be between your hands. It's not easy to do that for me. It's not easy, I know, for you to stay along with this webinar for an hour, for more than one hour, to get all of this information. You are going to get a bulk of information. It's, it's a lot, and you need a lot of time to handle it. So I'm advising you to be in a quiet place, to be in a good mood, keep your mind fresh, and focus with me because it's really, really, very important. Entrepreneurial opportunities, a fear or a passion felt by a certain group of people that not being adequately addressed by an existing business. In this manner, Georgia has a lot of entrepreneurial opportunities. This is what I'm saying to you, that this country is growing, it's an emerging market. You know, you might be thinking now, oh man, a post-Soviet Union country, there should be bureaucracy and there should be corruption and there should be blah, blah, blah. Yes, this is what all of us know about both Soviet Union countries, but Georgia is totally different. And this is what I'm going to show you in the upcoming minutes during this webinar. And now this is the time, let's start our webinar. Georgia is a small country in the east of Europe. It's a post Soviet Union country and it has approximately 4 million population. It has a long coast on the Black Sea. It's a neighbor country to Russia, Turkey, Azerbaijan, Armenia. 
its economy is stable and its national currency is called Larry, Georgian Larry. And right now, one dollar equal three Larry. Since we are in a pandemic right now, Georgia has proved that it's one of the leading country in fighting coronavirus with only 13 deaths in all over the country with more recovered cases from the virus than the infected case. In the last couple of days, you might heard that Tbilisi, the capital of Georgia, has become the safest destination for travelers from all over the world due to the safety and the success of the government in fighting this virus. Georgian language is one of the oldest in the world. It's written by its totally unique script, which looks like hearts and it's it's very beautiful and georgian language is one of the hardest language as well if you can speak english fluently you can handle all of your matters here very well because all of the young generation speaks english mostly 90 percent of the young generations speaks english very well since the collapse of the soviet union and georgia became an independent state people started to learn english in their school so you can live here you can invest you can do business while speaking only english on the other hand if we if we are going to say that we should mention that if you learn some georgian that will be very very helpful to you in dealing with the people in uh, knowing more about the country its culture and their traditions learning georgian is not a must for investing or doing business but it's essential for communicating with the locals and especially the old people now let's talk about why to do business in georgia there are many many reasons and everyone has its own reason for me, the reason that I invested in this country is that I loved it. I totally loved it. I loved the people, the food, the nature, the level of transparency, and I loved all of that. This is why I decided to settle down here and to invest in many different businesses since 2016. So I'm going to give you some of the reasons why to invest in Georgia or why to do business in Georgia and you can have your own. Well, we are talking about the low tax. This is one of the reasons for a lot of investors and entrepreneurs from all over the world that they can immigrate and or they can start to move their businesses overseas so they can have a low tax, a low tax regime especially i'm talking about the americans uh, the united states citizens or the scandinavian citizens or the danish or the dutchies i know all of these countries has a high tax rate but in georgia there is it's more low tax rate and i'm gonna give you a hint the tax rate doesn't exceed in any way 20 percent in general what I am going to add to your knowledge that if you are providing digital products, softwares, or some digital services, you can pay 0% tax. This is what you should know about Georgia. There is something called the virtual zone, and this virtual zone allows your company, if it's registered in the virtual zone, to pay 0% tax rate. And for sure, as a consulting firm, we are Nomad Entrepreneur. We provide all of the services regarding setting your business, moving it here, structure it very well for the low tax. And if you provide any digital products, we can register your company in the virtual zone easily to get a 0% tax. And this is what we just did approximately three weeks ago for one of our clients you will see his certificate when we registered his company in the virtual zone even during this pandemic we registered it in may 
while everything is closed and we succeeded to do it for him in this hard time to keep in mind that we can provide this service for you if you decided to do it one day the reason number two is the growing economy georgian economy is growing so fast since 2004 and the revolution the rose revolution if you read about the georgian history you will know that there was a revolution here in 2003 it's called the rose revolution or the revolution of rose where the people went out in the street hanging rose in their hands and asking the regime which was a pro-russian regime to step down and they succeeded and after the revolution the georgian people has elected their third president of Georgia, Mikhail Saakashvili, which was very successful in his first term. He was uh, developing the country, improving the government tools to deal with corruption and all of this stuff. And in his second term, he had some terrible mistakes. He has done some terrible mistakes. I'm not here to talk about politics, but this is in general. And since the Rus revolution, Georgian economy has grown so fast and Georgia developed from a post-Soviet Union country to a modern country, to a Western country, where it's ranked number four for the ease of doing business and where the World Bank called Georgia a unique success in 2012 due to its high transparency level. The reason number three why you should do business in Georgia or why to do business in Georgia is because of the fast services i am talking about opening a bank account in 30 minutes and it doesn't matter if you are a resident of georgia or if you are not you can open a bank account in georgia in 30 minutes and wait for it it's legendary you can open your company in one day in 24 hours or even in three or two hours where will you have to pay additional cost for the fast service this is crazy and this is not exist in any of the neighbor countries here it's if you are going to open a company in russia or azerbaijan or armenia or turkey you will get days and sometimes months to get your license here you can have it in one day so this is just a notion about how fast are the services here and let's continue georgia has a perfect location as i mentioned before which allowed it to be a crossroad for between the east and the west this has made georgia one of the points where the all of the trades which come from the the east and goes to the west Across this country and due to its perfect location and its long cost on the Black Sea the government decided to improve their services their uh, logistic services for the ports and they are starting a very very big project now it's called Anaklia port where will be where it will be the biggest port in the Black Sea and you can understand that very well that there are this region has a lot of hot points a lot of hot points and wars in the last couple of years i'm talking about between azerbaijan a war between azerbaijan and armenia their conflict on naragno karabakh uh, azerbaijan claims that naragno karabakh is occupied by armenia so and and you know for sure about the armenian genocide and their very their bad relation with turkey georgia in this position has developed its relationship with all of its neighbor even with russia one of the enemies for georgia the current government has a good relation with russia uh, they are not talking anymore about uh, getting uh, abkhazia by force they are willing to negotiate and willing to do that peacefully there is no corruption i am talking about corruption in general because i came from uh, and i came from egypt and corruption there is very high the corruption level is very high transparency level is very low and i went to turkey and i went to russia i went to azerbaijan and i i know all of this country has corruption and has a very low transparency level 
comparing to Georgia and I guarantee that most of you will agree me especially the entrepreneurs who started business in any of these three countries will say yes we have found a low transparency level in these countries and this is and there is no offense in that to all of my Turkish friends all of my Russian friends all of my Azari friends there is no offense in that I'm saying my opinion honestly and I am not willing to to give a fake information so comparing to these three countries the transparency level in Georgia is very high now with one of the most important questions what businesses to do in Georgia I know that it will be different for everyone because when I came here I saw an opportunity in hospitality sector that's why I started my own hostel for a year and a half and then I sold it I made a couple of thousand of dollars more and now I started many different businesses in other sectors but for you you could choose any of these three industries you see now you can invest in this three industry with a good business plan with a good connections with a good business feasibility you can start in, in any of these three sectors or other sectors like uh, technology or high tech or even mobile apps all of this all of these sectors or all of these industries are growing in Georgia but now I'm giving you the traditional sectors where everyone comes to Georgia invest in these three sectors but for sure there are a lot of opportunity in mobile apps and in more in high technology if you are going to work if you are interested in such sections you can just contact us through our website nomadentrepreneur.io I think you are saying it now here and you can contact us we will have we will be happy to provide you with more information so the first sector is real estate yes real estate industry in Georgia is growing very fast everyone invested in this sector in the last couple of years has made lots of money has made a very high ROI return on investment and now it's it's growing more and more coming years expect that it's going to grow more and more because of a lot of reasons where we don't have much time to talk, to talk all about all of them but we can say a couple of reasons especially for you you will be interested in these reasons one of the reasons that Georgia is among the safest five countries in the world Georgia is one of them and the reference will be in the description you can check this website and you will find that Georgia is ranked number four among the safest five countries in the world so this is one of the reasons the second reason is the low the low cost of living a lot of expats now living in this country and they can tell you that life here is very very cheap and they all left their homelands coming here to live here among these wonderful people and with a very low cost of living this is one this is one of the reasons as well so we are talking about safety we are talking about the low living the low cost of living and and there are a couple of more reasons why real estate is growing because a lot of people are coming a lot of people moved their campus towards Georgia and this is why this industry is growing and there are a lot of reasons a lot of other reasons we can talk about them in a special video regarding real estate in Georgia but for now I'm giving you a very fast hint about this industry the second industry we are talking about is tourism tourism is growing in Georgia very fast the last year Georgia had about 8 million visitors 8 million travelers from all over the globe those people came to Georgia spent their money here enjoy the amazing nature enjoy the wonderful food the nice hospitality of the people big hospitality in companies has hotels here in Georgia 
uh, Sheraton, Heloton, a lot of these big corporates who are in hospitality business and these people do not come to such a country if it's not growing this country is growing tourism is growing here and in the upcoming years Georgia will become one of the hottest spots for tourism in all over the world and I myself as I mentioned before I came to this country as a traveler and then I decided to settle down here to live the lifestyle I was chasing and now I'm having it so I'm very happy agriculture Georgia has a very very fertile land which allows you to make a lot of money from agriculturing any vegetables or fruits considering for sure the weather case you cannot aggregate here mango for example you should do the right one and this fertile land is very cheap but the bad news here is that now at this moment foreigners are not allowed to buy any agricultural land to go around this decision you can just rent this land for 50 40 years and you can keep doing your business and there are another way legal way 100 percent legal way to own agricultural land even with this law here with this law in force there are some legal ways to own agricultural land and i am a lawyer so i know laws i can we can go around those laws as long as we respect them we do not break the law so legally you can own agricultural land but there are some ways it's a secret I'm not gonna reveal it here but for sure if you are going to ask our services in Nomad Entrepreneur we are going to help you to do it and we are going to help you to increase your revenue we are going to help you to reduce your tax legally we are going to help you to start a very successful business in this beautiful country because we have experience it's not only me I have a lot of people around a lot of connections and this allows me to provide a very high quality service which will satisfy you and meets your goal let's get back to our webinar agriculture here is one of the successful businesses to do but there are some obstacles and you should consider them and there's a way to go around there is a way to do everything legally but you should choose the right person or the right people to work with now we talked about everything is perfect you can make money this country is amazing these people are nice and what's next to be honest the next thing to make this webinar very helpful to you we are going to talk about the cons of doing business in Georgia what are the obstacles you are going to face or you are going to have while doing business here so I'm going to tell you this now so you should consider this cons before starting any business in any industry so let's start well Georgia are Georgians are only four million so this market is not huge this market is not big I'm talking about a neighbor's country like Russia which is a very big country with a very big population and even turkey a very big country with a very big population a lot of goods are exported from this country so georgia is a bit different it's only four million people and the purchase power is not very high if we are talking about the small markets we i'm talking especially about food industries where most of the goods of the markets are imported from Ukraine or from Turkey so if you are going to produce your own product in this beautiful country you will have to think more and more about the competition level because these products are very cheap their quality is not too high but the prices are very cheap so the competition level will be very high in food industries it's it's full with Ukrainian Russian Turkish companies if you are going to produce your own product you will have some hard time marketing it uh, giving it a, a, a good price and you will have some high 
competition. So in food industries, you should be careful and you should consider each word I said in this part, in this webinar. And now to my tips and advice. Before starting business in Georgia, you should consider these tips. You should consider this advice before investing any dollar in Georgia. And the first one is the low cost. I am talking here about you should consider starting your business with a low cost. You shouldn't spend 50% of your capital money before testing your business, before validating your idea. And we're going to talk about that in details in the next slide. So stay tuned, don't go anywhere. You can grab a, a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and keep watching. For now, let's move to the second thing. The second thing you should consider before starting a business in Georgia is really very basic. It's really very basic. You should have a good business plan. You do not do business before having a business plan. The business plan is everything. The business plan is going to show you the feasibility of, the, of this idea is going to show you if you are going to lose your money or if you are going to increase your money in bank. So you should do a good business plan and a good business plan should be written by an expert or by someone who knows a lot about the country, who knows a lot about everything related to this country, traditions, history, economy, politics, everything, everything, because a good written business plan is going to help you increase your money in your bank account so to make more profits. The third point is choose the right time. I am talking about some basics here, like if you, if you are going to open a store, a cloth store in the country here, you shouldn't open this cloth store with a winter cloth in the summer. It's a very big mistake. For instance, you shouldn't open a skiing equipment shop in the summer. You shouldn't do that. You should choose the right time, the right location. This is one of the secrets. Perfect location, perfect time is everything in business. And your first 100 days in business are the most important period in this business. You should focus in this time to validate your business idea. You should focus to develop it and enhance your services or products. The last thing you should consider before investing in Georgia is do not get overcharged. Really. If you are going to, if you are asking a service from someone, you should consider everything related to this service. You should know the price of the service and you should compare it. If it's getting, if, you, if, if it's overcharged, you should reconsider someone else to do this service for you. I'm telling you this because when I started this business, when I started Nomad Entrepreneur Channel, there was no content about investing or doing business in Georgia in English. And I am sure there is no information about doing business in Georgia. That I'm talking about detailed information about doing business or investing in Georgia in language such as French, Spanish, Italian, German. I am sure. I am also. I have also another channel which is. I am providing a lot of content, a lot of helpful content about investing in Georgia also, but in Arabic, my home language, my my native language and when i started that channel as well there was no much information so the lack of information gives everyone of the locals or of anyone else who knows this information a power over you so don't get overcharged now let's move to the next slide and the first and this slide is called start lean what do you mean by start lean do you remember in the last slide, in the previous slide, it was low cost that you should 
start your business at the lowest cost possible and now I'm explaining to you how to do it how to use lean startup methodology for its founder Eric Ries which a lovely guy which I read his books and I am following him everywhere he's a great guy in business this guy has did an invention a great invention he deserves a Nobel Prize for this but there's no Nobel Prize in business. So start lean and lean start the methodology. It talks about uh, idea and MVB, then we move to data, then valuation, then developing. What does that mean? That means you've at first you have a business idea, you have a business idea in your mind, and then you should, what you should do is convert this business idea to a minimal viable product which is here you can see MVP minimal viable product which means the low the first version of your business the very very first basic version of your business this is where you should start don't invest all of your capital money doing just MVB this is wrong this is a very big mistake you just do that you just should you should just do your minimal viable product first and it could be a service so your product in this manner is could could be your product in this manner could be a service or a, an actual product so this is what it is and when you start with the very basic version of your business idea, you should validate, you should start to collect data. And then when you collect data, that means you will have to validate your business idea. And then you should develop in it. It's a continuous process. It's very continuous process. So in business, you have to do business like this. And idea, then minimum viable product, and then you should collect data. The data here could be your customer reviews, your customer opinions, your, your, you are doing surveys, asking your customers, what do you think we shall do to improve our services? What do you think we shall do to enhance our products? What do you miss in our products or services? When you do these surveys and you collect this data, you will be able to validate your product, your service or product. And validation here is also a continuous process. When you do enhance and when you do listen to your customers and take these words from me, your customers are your boss. Your customer is your boss. Any customer for you is your boss. So you should listen to him and you should consider every single word he's saying. So in this validation process, you should reproduce your product or service again with the new enhancements with the new features you add according to your customers opinion and i'm talking about customers not friends not family don't consider their opinion because they are not an actual customer an actual customer will tell you what you exactly need what you exactly should do and then when you do the validation, you do your product, again, you develop your product with the new enhancement, with the opinions of your customers, you develop it and keep doing this process again and again and again forever. This is the only way you will be in business, you will be in market and you will be successfully positioning yourself in the market. If you have done this once and stopped, you, your business is going to die after months, after years, but it's definitely going to die.
you should keep doing this process enhancing your products enhancing your services uh, getting your business to the next level where it meets your actual customers expectations all right guys we talked about lean startup and its founder Eric Ries. But I should repeat again and again you should read this book lean startup you will find it everywhere it's very popular since 2012 now let's get to the other side where can we apply this methodology to the reality, to the business. In the next couple of minutes, I'm going to show you how to apply this methodology in business and how I applied myself on a couple of my businesses here and outside Georgia even. So let's start. The first time I applied this methodology in Georgia was with this business it's my hostel this was a hostel and it was the first business for me in georgia and it has a very very nice story me starting this hostel it's a very nice story i'm gonna tell you i was walking in the street one of the most famous streets in tbilisi and then i said wow how beautiful is this street how important all of the governmental institutions in this street is right the center of the city right the center of tbilisi i walked from the beginning of the street which is liberty square and till the end which is rustaville metro station and rustaville statue stand in front of rustaville statue it was after midnight and i said wow how can i start a business in this area in this street especially and i'm gonna dedicate all of my work all of my money to do a business in this area it's very important and it's very nice and then i started this hostel i started this hostel after this night within five months after I started this hostel within one year, in my first year, it became the best cheap hostel in Tbilisi. Among more than 300 hostels in the city, it was chosen by one of the most popular independent bloggers as the best cheap hostel in Tbilisi. And it's also ranked among the five best hostels in city in general. How did I use lean startup methodology starting this hostel? Well, in the beginning, I chose that area, which is Rustaville Street, because I saw a lot of potential. There was no much hostels in this area, and it is one of the center areas. Then I chose the location which was very near to the metro station. So you can go anywhere in the city within 100 meters from the hostel. Uh, so this is why it was the perfect location and it's still the perfect location. So what did I do exactly? I, I walked in all of the streets, all of the hostels in this street and I asked about the prices and then I found the cheapest one was 12 lari per night for a dormitory, 8 bedroom dormitory. And then I said, okay, let's see if I, I am gonna now put stickers on the street it was allowed before in 2017 it was allowed to put stickers in the street now it's not it's kind of there's a fine and extra but i'm gonna print 100 papers 100 sticker on the street i will put my number on the sticker and i will say hey there is a hostel in this area for 10 lari only per night i made this advertising i bought this 100 stickers on all around the street and then what i found was amazing i received more than 100 calls from foreigners travelers asking where is the hostel exactly where is the location can I come and check it? And my answer for sure, because there was no hostel yet. I didn't rent the place yet. I didn't rent that area yet. I was just testing as we, can, as we, as I just taught you in Lean Startup Methodology, you should test and validate the idea and collect data with the minimum cost, with the very low cost. So 
I received 100 calls and they were asking me where is the location. I was saying, sorry, we are just starting and in a couple of weeks we are going to be ready to host you and we will call you back. For sure, there was some of them were uh, very short term travelers, so they, they, we couldn't reach them back or I couldn't reach them back. But the point is, I spent just some money, which is very low money. I spent approximately 50 lari for on, on these stickers. And then I now know kind of that this business, if I am going to start this hostel in this area with this price, it's going to be successful. And the other thing, I was not satisfied even with this 100 calls, over 112 calls in the first week. I did also a Facebook ad. I created one ad telling the people, hey, we have a hostel in Rustaville Street and it was just a photo. And the price for the bed in it makes dormitory is 10 lari. Are you interested? Message us. I received a lot of messages. I spent approximately $25. I was spending $5 a day and I received a lot of messages. I received more calls. At that point, I said, okay, it's going to be successful. I'm gonna start this business as soon as possible and I'm gonna keep developing it. And this is what I did. All of what I spent to make sure that my idea is successful and it's going to be worth it i'm not going to lose all of the capital money as i mentioned before all of the money i had was five thousand dollar which was barely enough to start this hostel so i'm gonna gamble with all of my money in this business so i had to spend some money to make sure 100 percent is going to be successful and this is what happened i spent approximately 50 or $60 on Facebook ads and uh, on these stickers. And now I have, I'm sure that if I start the hostel in this area with this price, 10 Larry, 10 gel per night, it's going to be successful. Now I should start to do, to build my business plan. Now I should start to do my market research. And now I should, start to do this business as soon as possible because I, when I started to do that it was in spring and as you might know that the season here for tourism in Georgia is summer so I had to do it very fast and this is what I did the hostel run very successfully I started even when I started the hostel I started it with only two rooms it was only two rooms two dormitory rooms in the beginning. For four months, for the first four months, it was only two rooms and it was 100% occupied. 100% occupied all of the time. So what I did next that I found next to me, my neighbor has some rooms and he's not living there. I said to him, okay, man, I need just to rent these two rooms more. I want to add these two rooms to my hostel. He said, okay, it's fine, you can get them. And I made a deal for a very nice price, for a very cheap price. I expanded the hostel from the, just two bedrooms to more two bedrooms. It became four bedrooms. And after six months, I had a neighbor who has a very big area. He, I said to him, okay, I want just to rent. I'm expanding this business. So I want the whole floor of this building to be mine, the whole second floor to be mine. What do you think if you can rent me, rent to me this area, your area? And I made a deal and I converted this area to become a bar very beautiful very big space bar with a very nice balcony on the street it was amazing after and i was making money i bought cars i started to do like tours around the country and then i said okay now what's next this business i have no way to scale it more and more it's very hard for me to scale it now and i was just getting bored from this business because it was consuming most of my time i was dealing with hundreds of people every day different people every day you know you can, you can feel it it's i was exhausted 
But there was a lot of good things on the other hand. Different cultures, different mentalities. I was learning a lot about the languages. I was learning about the cultures. I had a very great discussion with a lot of people. A lot of them now still my friends. I made a lot of friends from all over the world in this business. And this is why I loved it. At the end of 2018, I said, okay, now I want to move on. I want to start something else. I want to do something bigger. And now let's see, I want to sell it. I sell that hostel after when I started it, I started it as, you, as I mentioned before with $5,000, I sold it for $13,000. And I made a lot of profit during this time. I bought cars and I started tours and I had some money in my bank account, so in total, two, more than 250% profits in this business after managing it within the first a year and a half. I sold that hostel to one of the guests who was interested in moving to this country. He was from Japan. He's still my friend. We are friends. We, are, we talk from time to time. And I sold that hostel and since 2019, since I sold it, that hostel, I started many different businesses in many different sectors in Georgia and outside Georgia. So this is the point. Lean startup methodology is all about reducing the cost of establishing your business. You should create MVP. And even in my situation, starting this hostel, I didn't create MVP. I just said, I just printed some paper, some stickers, bought them and hang them in the street, telling the people, we have a hostel in this area for 10 lari, just call us. And I bought my number. I received lots of calls, more than 112 calls, and I created even a Facebook ads telling people, targeting the foreigners and travelers who are in Georgia now that we have a hostel in this street for 10 lari, and call us or message us now. After getting the result, I was satisfied. I was 100% sure that this hostel is going to be successful. Now, let's move to one of my current businesses. And I'm going to tell you how I applied Lean Startup Methodology in this business, which I am running now. It's actually education consulting firm. Its, its name is Study. What actually I do with this company is I recruit international students from all over the world to study in Georgian universities. So what I have done actually, I have done a lot of agreements with many big universities here in Georgia, governmental and private universities. And now I'm recruiting students. I provide a full packages of services to the students, especially my targeted students right now are the Arab students in my home country, Egypt, and, and from and the other countries from the Middle East, like Lebanon, Jordan, and other countries. And what we do is we provide a full packages to this student where we will offer them a house or a home apartment or a room we will offer them uh, helping opening a bank account or getting a residence permit as a student and, and registering them in the universities, in their desired universities. Actually, I started this business after starting my media agency. I have a media agency here. It's called Caucasus News. This Caucasus News is, uh, is the first news website to provide a news coverage from Georgia and about Georgia and Armenia and Azerbaijan in Arabic. Before I started this news website, there was no news website in Arabic about Georgia or Armenia or Azerbaijan. This news website provided me a lot of information because I'm a SEO manager. For sure, I read my analytics through Google and through the search console and I was developing this website, I was seeing what are the Arab people interested in about Georgia. I saw some potential about studying in Georgia in the upcoming time, in the upcoming year. When I saw that, that a lot of Arabic students from all over the Arab world interested in studying in Georgia, I started 
very fast, created this company, stopped this company, created a very nice website, created a very uh, automatic system which allow the student to apply to his desired or to his favorite university through a full automated system where he can uh, upload his certificates and accreditation and answer our questions about the university, which university and why he does why he wants to study in this university and all of this service. I created this website with two languages, English and Arabic, because I am for sure going to scale this business and I'm going to target a lot of non-Arabic speaking countries. But not now, it's in my second plan, my long-term plan. I'm gonna target these people, but for now, I am the leading company here providing these services for all over the Arab world students. So this is this is what happened with me with this company. I got the data from Google Analytics. I got that a lot of people, uh, a lot of students from the Arab world interested in studying in Georgia. And this is why I so fast started this company. I didn't want to miss this opportunity. And now what happened is I'm the leading company providing this service for sure for Arabs in Georgia and now what's next that we already are talking in this webinar about business and investing in Georgia and why I am doing this webinar because of this reason because of this I started a very fresh business in consultant sector this is why I am telling you now this webinar. This is why I'm here providing you with my knowledge, with my experience. I am telling you that we have a consulting firm here in Georgia where we can help you set up your business legally, reduce your tax and get residence permit. We provide a legal consultation, accounting consultation, business consultation through a group of people who are working in our firm and the story of starting this business this consulting firm nomad entrepreneur and this channel is so interesting and i'm going to just give you a hint because we don't have much time now i'm going to give you a hint about starting this uh, business this business only started when i found a lot of potential uploading the first four and five videos on this YouTube channel on my YouTube channel Nomad Entrepreneur at YouTube. This channel has provided me that uh, there is a lot of potential in this sector if I can provide my services to these people who are missing a lot, who, who cannot find a lot of information about Georgia and about investing and business in Georgia I can make money from that and this is the story this is the fast story of starting this business nomad entrepreneur which one of my successful business I do approximately two and three calls consultation one on one consultation every day and I make a very sufficient money from this business and this was a very very simple version of the story but for sure it's very complicated and very interesting and one day we can, well, i'm going to tell you this story in detail now what's next you have got a lot of important useful information from me i gave you a lot of secrets of my business of my way in doing business what you can do now <clears throat> is this do it alone or do it with an expert this is the point a lot of competitors a lot of people see me in business man you are so crazy you are giving a lot of information for free you are giving a lot of important useful information to everyone through your youtube channel but believe me there is something if you are going to get this information and you are going to do it alone if you choose to do it alone you will have a lot of hard time because you don't have the successful mentality yet in doing business you don't have the information the right and correct information what's coming next is one of the most important reason for this why a lot of entrepreneurs fail in doing business abroad this is one of the most important reason 
they build their business plan on false information. Come on, man. You, you, you cannot tell me that you, you are the only one who has the right, correct information. No, 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 I'm not saying that. I'm just saying to you this now. You are going to build your business plan on a statistics, which is published through the governmental institutions or the private institutions. But do you think this statistic, do you think these statistics are completely right, are completely honest? Do you think so? Well, if you think so, then you, you, your mind is too far away. You, you, you cannot succeed in business. But what I'm going to explain to you now will clear it for you. Because I worked in media and I know a lot about media <clears throat> and how to control, how to advertise the things. This statistic, I'm talking in the both sides, the positive statistics and even the negative reports, they are both have agenda. There are agendas behind these statistics and reports, whether it's negative, whether it's positive. So you cannot depend on these statistics 100%. What I do myself, I extract the numbers myself. So this is why when I do a business, I succeed. I have all of the numbers. Let me explain more. The published statistics is mostly affected by the publishing editorial policy, which I quote agenda. They are affected by the agenda behind the institution, behind the company who published these statistics or this report. So it is not based on a real information, on a true information. Actually, it contains a lot of false information. So what I do exactly is I don't build my business plan on this statistics. I don't build it because I know there is agenda behind it. So what I do instead, I build my business plan in any targeted business. I build it through my own numbers, the numbers I get from the real world. And this is why I played a very important role in building many successful businesses here in Georgia and outside Georgia, I don't depend on the statistics. I'm not saying they are 100% wrong. I'm not saying that they are 100% correct. This is what I'm saying. They have an agenda behind them. If it's positive or even negative, there is agendas behind them. And this is why you shouldn't depend on this statistics or report in building your business. It will be a very big mistake and this is why a lot of entrepreneurs fall in business abroad because they build their business strategy and their business plan on or even their market research on this number which is published by companies and institutions and each one of them have an agenda. So I build my businesses on the, mar on the numbers I get from the market, from the real market not from the report. So before I start any business, I have very several indicators, adaptive indicators. What I do is I watch these indicators. I test the business idea and then I decide is it going to be a valid idea or not. It's going to fail before I start any business. This is why as I said, I started many successful businesses here and abroad in my home country in Egypt. And to learn this, to learn what I'm saying to you, I spent years of my life. It's not published on the academic books. It's not the something you can learn in the college or university or diploma or master or even PhD. It's something you should learn from the real world, from the, your experience in business. This is very important. So let's get back. 
This is why I'm telling you, you need an expert, real information, perfect business plan, and business relation. This is one very important thing you should know that when you have an expert, you are not only going to benefit from my experience in business or you are not going to get a real information, you are also going to benefit from my connections, which is very important. I built this connection a year after year and this is going to help you to start your successful business very fast and to invest in Georgia safely and smartly. So this is why you need an expert. This expert could be me. If you choose me, I would be very happy for sure to help you through our website, nomadentrepreneur.io, or if you choose someone else, it's up to you, but you really need an expert. You really need an expert because you don't want to gamble or risk all of your capital money or even a thousand dollar. You don't want to risk a thousand dollar, a thousand bucks. It's, it's not a very low number for now. In this hard time, it's not a very low number. So this is why you need an expert. I don't want to be cheesy. I don't want to talk about myself a, a lot, but I'm going to just show you this. This is one of my customers is a very decent gentleman. His review is already published on our website and he wrote a very long review, not only these simple sentences. He, it was a very long review, but I couldn't publish all of it, but we have it already. We're still in connection. We have some, even we have some plans in the future together to do a business together. Uh, he's a really decent guy. He's from Canada, Brad. Thank you for your nice review and thank you for supporting uh, me and this channel and this business. And I hope one day we are going to continue our business together so we can expand and provide more important services that which is not exist yet in Georgia. He's from Canada and uh, the second one is uh, for sure uh, Samir. I did an interview with him a couple of months ago, maybe a couple of weeks ago, and he's a very nice guy. He's from the same country and the same maybe city and the same area of Elon Musk. So I think I, I expect for him a very bright future. He is going to be a very successful, well-known businessman, I'm sure, because he has a lot of the skills which will help him. So thank you, Samir, for doing business with me. The third one is a very nice lady from Brazil, Martina, and she is a very nice lady. I met her two years ago, and we I helped her to move here and to start her own successful business. I th uh, she's she's working online here and she's working online she has an online store which is very successful and she is very creative very innovative lady uh, i uh, i love doing business with her and thank you martina for your lovely words about me and about nomad entrepreneur and finally kim uh, she is a very nice uh, lady she's I met her with her husband and they are a very nice couple. I helped them also to start their online business here in Georgia and they are doing very well. Thank you, Kim, for your sweet words. I think Kim is from Australia and I really appreciate working with her and doing business with her was a great pleasure. So thank you, Kim. And now uh, I think we are going to have our questions and answer session but b before that I want you guys if you really thinking about investing in Georgia doing business in Georgia I want you to go now to nomadentrepreneur.io and click become a client you will not be charged any money yet when you click this button do not expect someone to charge you money yet you will answer very, very simple questions about you, about your business. When you answer these uh, questions, you help me and my team to know if we will be able to help you or not, if we can help you or not. We need you to answer these questions in details. When you fill this application, you will receive a, an email within 48 hours telling you what we can do for you. And at that point, 
you might be charged some money to, to arrange a consultation call with me or one, with one of my colleagues who are working in accounting consultation or real estate consultation. So you will be also subscribed to our newsletter where you will receive a lot of important and very interesting emails about doing business in Georgia and about the updates, what's, what's new in the market, what to do. If you really want to grow your business here in this country, if you have visited this country before and if you love this beautiful nature, this decent people around, you can consult me through this website, through our platform, nomadentrepreneur.io and I will be happy, I will do my best to get you on the right track, to get you on the right place, to help you with all of the information you need about doing business and investing in Georgia. So visit this website now and just fill the application. If we will be able to help you, we will reach you with an email telling you, okay, now you can just schedule a call with me or with any of the other colleagues I have in the firm and we will be able to provide you with all of the information you need and that's it for now let's now move to the q and a now I, I know there are a lot of questions on the chat box and there are a lot of people who has a lot of questions in mind now and now i'm going to answer them one by one i will try to help you as much as i can considering the fact that I cannot provide to you all of the information you need for free because there are still secrets and secrets. You don't think that all of the information you had on the past hour of me talking, teaching you is everything. This is not everything. This is not all what you need. There are a lot of secrets. <clears throat> there are a lot of information which you can, I cannot give it for free. I just give it to my loyal customers who consult me, who I do business with. So now I'm going to answer your questions in a few seconds. Hello everybody, I hope it was useful and you benefited from this webinar and uh, now it's the time where I am gonna answer all of your questions. I'm ready to answer your questions no matter how long will it take. I respect we got a lot of viewers today. I didn't expect this number. We have an average of about 19 or 18 viewers on our analytics this is why i'm very happy i didn't expect to get this number so today i'm going to answer all of your questions no matter how long will it take let's start and we i'm gonna scroll the chat box because we have a lot of questions from the beginning of the webinar so the first one is be alal why don't you answer email he he's asking me why don't you answer emails or well be allowed we i am doing several different businesses and i'm very busy don't expect me to answer your email if you are not too specific you should be specific on your questions on your request and your inquir inquiries if you applied through our platform nomadentrepreneur.io if you filled the application, if you answer the application in details, we will definitely answer your email. We will reply your email definitely telling you we are able to help or we cannot help you. And then if we are able to help, we, you can schedule a call. You will have to schedule a call. It's not a free service. It's not a free call with me or with any of my colleagues in the firm. So this is about the emails. Uh, Asif Ibrahim said, great show. Thank you, Asif. Uh, we are happy to have you in our uh, viewers. We are so glad to have a lot of you then sending me the lot of thanking me in emails and appreciating our work. 
we are so happy for that we know that we are the first people to provide a lot of free useful content about investing in georgia and doing business so thank you asif and thank you everyone who sent me a lot of uh, emails thanking me and uh, appreciating my work we have the second the third one is uh, Charmine. Charmine, uh, what are the requirements to get into Georgia? Well, Charmine, you can get into Georgia if you are a, a, a European citizen or any of the American citizens, I mean South American or North American, Canadian American. You do not need visa. You can come to Georgia by just booking your airplane tickets and then you will be allowed to stay in Georgia for a year for full year, continuous one year without a visa or without any need for residence permit or any permission. Uh, also, you will be allowed to open your bank account. You can open your bank account with your, with your passport. You can uh, start your business with your passport. You can buy a house with your passport. You can buy a car with your passport. You do not need to have a residence permit to do all of this stuff. So this is great, I think. Uh, uh, okay, second question from Charmine. I have tried to make contact on email and via your website, but no response. Well, Charmines, I am very sorry for that. I apologize for it to you and to all of our customers who applied through our website. We have a very high demand. We are just scaling this business now. We are hiring a lot of people to be on or to help you with all of what you need. So this might take a couple of weeks to uh, for us to answer your email, to process your application. We want to do a very good work. We want to processors to process every application, every single application. It takes time from us and if we are going to be, if you are going to help you, if we are going to be able to help you, that means a lot for us, a lot of work for us. So we don't just uh, get your application and after one day, two days, three days, we just tell you, okay, we can, we are ready, we, you can schedule a call because we have a lot of customers already and this takes time with us. So we are very sorry. Uh, we will reach back to, we will reach out to you and to other customers who apply through our website soon and we will finish processing all of these applications soon. Just stay tuned and now we are in uh, COVID-19 time, COVID-19 era. So just relax, chill out and enjoy our free useful content, this webinar and other videos and collect as much as, inf uh, as information and we will be uh, we will reach out to you and to our other client soon and the second Jan said connection is lost uh, i think it was in the beginning of the webinar jan and uh, for now it's everything is is fine i see everything is fine out in my end and my back end so i think it's fine now um uh, charmaine uh, charmaine asked we are looking to start a business in the agriculture sector, auto, electrical, and the diesel fuel injection to farmers in the agriculture community. Is there a market? Well, uh, Charmaine, there is a market for agriculture, uh, for agriculture industry for sure. As I thought, as I said in this webinar, that agriculture is growing here. Georgia has a very fertile land and uh, for your specific sector, <clears throat> we need to do some research. So if you mentioned that in your applications through our website, maybe this is one of the reasons why we didn't reply, you, reply to your email till now because we are doing our research. So just uh, wait for our reply, for our email and we will answer this question to you on our scheduled call, one-to-one -one call. It will be mostly with me, just when we are ready with the information you read, with the correct information you need, we will reach out to you 
and then you will be able to schedule a call with me. <laughs> NXD3TH, he said, how can I live in Georgia and pay zero personal income tax on income as a digital nomad? Well, uh, personal tax here in Georgia is 20%. To pay zero personal tax, this is uh, kind of um, not possible, but there are some legal ways. You need to do some stuff to pay, to, to, get, you, to get zero percent. You, you, should, uh, you should find some way to uh, convert this payments you receive from being a personal payment to be a commercial payment or from a company. And uh, this is what we said in the, in the webinar, this is what I said in the webinar, that there is something called the virtual zone of Georgia, where you will be able to pay 0% tax for uh, digital products. <clears throat> so uh, you need to find some way, you need some consultation, and you need uh, the consultant should know about what exactly you do, who is paying you and how much you get paid to, to help you to get the lowest tax possible here in Georgia. <clears throat> and now the, we have a question, we have some comment from um, Maxime. Clearly better than being in France from COVID point in <laughs> for you. Yeah, Georgian Georgian government have done a great success, have done a great job fighting COVID-19. And now it's Georgia is one of the, the first 15 countries that European Union allows their citizens or travelers from Georgia to enter the European Union. And what is interesting about it, maybe you will you will understand that that uh, European Union didn't allow American citizens uh, to enter EU uh, because of the COVID, because of the high COVID cases in uh, the United States. But they allowed Georgia, they allowed 15 other countries where the government already controlled COVID, already succeeded in fighting COVID-19. Yeah, and... Uh, the second question is from Lana D. Bear. Lana, how can I get permanent residency in Georgia with an online social media agency startup? Need to be permanent before GE joins the EU. Don't want to get deported. Well, Lana, I think you will never get de deported as long as you didn't break the law, as long as you uh, stay here legally. You know, you, you will never get deported, but in case of Georgia joining the European Union, and this is, I think, is not going to happen for two or three more years, maybe more, and you you will not you will never get deported. So don't worry about that. And for the part of your question about residence permit in Georgia, it's uh, you have a couple of ways to get residence permit in Georgia. In Georgia, we have a very comprehensive, a very full video, full with details about residence permit in Georgia, and you will find it on our channel. You can watch it. You will know more about the residence permits, the law, especially the amendments which happened on the law uh, in last July, in the last year, and there you will understand everything. But very fast answer to your question, you can get residence permit the permanent resident permit in Georgia on two ways. The first way is getting married to a Georgian, a Georgian citizen. The second way is staying in Georgia legally by, for uh, investment, for work, or for uh, real estate as a real estate owner, as a real estate investor for five years. After the five years, you can apply for the permanent residence permit easily. So don't worry about getting deported, uh, Lana. It's her government and people are so welcoming. A second question from Lana. What are the best industries to start a new business if you do not have startup capital? Well, 
starting a new starting a new business in Georgia if you don't have a capital I mean a very big capital this is you should have a capital to start a business in Georgia or in any other country I mean it shouldn't be it could be not too much capital I mean just maybe five figure capital ten thousand dollar or more you can start a business here with ten thousand dollar or more or maybe less but it depends in in which industry and what skills do you have i can say in general like uh, you you can start a business in this in this field or in this sector and it's going to be successful i will be misleading you and this is wrong it depends on every person what what skills you have what what you can do is very important and what is your past experience it's very important but in general there are much opportunities in uh, mobile apps and in, in, in uh, high tech high technology uh, for uh, people who has the skills to start a business in this field and also in e-commerce there's some uh, there's some opportunities so this is a general answer because everyone has its own skills and it depends on your skills it depends on your experience so uh, i cannot give a very specific answer and uh, next question is oh we have Charmaine, Charmaine again what are the agricultural areas in georgia well, most of Georgia is considered agricultural areas because we have a lot of uh, mountains, a lot of green areas, but mostly the west of Georgia is a very big uh, area for uh, agriculture. The west, I'm talking about Samigrello area and about uh, Samatrida and uh, Emirati. Emirati also where is Kutaisi, the capital of Emirati is Kutaisi city, city of Kutaisi and these are also a very nice area very good area area for agriculture and for sure the east of georgia where kakhiti kakhiti is very popular for producing wine and for uh, for agriculture as well kakhiti is a very good area for agriculture for sure it's in the in the east of georgia so most of georgia is considered very good for agriculture because the land here is very fertile and it's very good to grow uh, and cultivate all of the most of the fruits and most of the vegetables well the next question is uh, <clears throat> uh, Chris I love the Sam as a Western is it possible to run a business in Georgia from another country or do you need boots on the ground well Chris uh, as, a, as a Western uh, it depends on your business on the business on the business you are going to run in which sector do you need in this business some people who will be operating here in georgia or you do not need that i mean if you are going to register your company here and you are going to do some e-commerce or uh, some e-commerce store or even affiliate marketing where you are not targeting Georgian citizens, you are not targeting Georgian people, you are targeting people internationally abroad outside Georgia. In that case, you do not need here, you do not need people here. Maybe you need just an accountant here who will be doing the declaration, sending the declaration every month to the revenue services, the agency which is responsible about tax and stuff like this but in uh, this is the one form of business where i think you do not need people on the ground you do not you do not need boats on the ground but if you are going to target georgian people here if you are going to target georgian companies or if you are going to do any business in georgia in this case for sure you need to have boats on the ground so it depends about the kind of business you are going to do <clears throat> And the next question we have is Charmaine again. With so many people coming to Georgia, is this not a risk for us that the government might decide to stop this? No, Charmaine, uh, there is no risk in that. Uh, the government is very happy, 
very very happy that there are a lot of people coming here to invest or to travel they have no problem at all with that because you are coming here to spend your money you are coming here to to share and to participate in the growing of this economy this is why now uh, in georgia everyone is suffering the economy is suffering because there is no foreign international flights coming right now and it's till the 1st of august there will be no flights coming to georgia till the 1st of august and so no the government is very happy you are coming here to spend your money even if you are a traveler just a tourist you are coming here to spend your money if you are coming to invest you are coming to spend your money as well you are coming to uh, to participate in the growing of the economy of this country so the government have no problem with that it should be easy and i think it's logical like this like what i i just explained and the second question ragesh ragesh said what is the process uh, i don't know what is your question what process are you asking if you are asking about the process of uh, 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 submitting your application and uh, getting a consultation from us, from a nomad entrepreneur, from me or any of my colleagues, you just first have to go to uh, nomadentrepreneur.io and then you just click become a client. As I said in the webinar, you will not be charged yet. When you click, you, when you click on become a client, you will have to fill the application. You have to answer all of the questions in details and then you will submit your application to this point, you will not be charged any money. When you, when we receive your application and process it, we will answer you. We will reach back to you, telling you what can we do for you and asking you to schedule a call. In case we are able to help, in case we are not able to help you, we will say sorry, we cannot help you. We cannot offer you any of our services. So this is a process of uh, contacting, of, of uh, booking a consultation, of a scheduling call with me or any of my colleagues through our website, nomadentrepreneur.io. <clears throat> Next question is from Lana again. Uh, Lana said, why do travelers not return to Georgia for a second holiday? I think Lana, Lana, you are mistaken. Like you are wrong because I know a lot of people who visit Georgia twice a year, not only yearly, twice a year. I know some people who come here for ten days, two two weeks every, two times every year. People who come here as a travelers love this country, love the hospitality, love the, the nature and visiting Georgia two times a, a year makes sense because here in the summer we have a very high demand on the summer activities like when you do a paragliding or when you do like a ski diving or uh, when you do like uh, uh, all of these activities hiking or camping on the mountains all of this activity is done in the summer and in the winter we have a very nice very cheap ski resorts in Georgia, Gudauri or Pakuriani, which is very, very cheap and which is very, very nice. So I know a lot of people who come here twice a year, one in the summer and one in the winter. And I know a lot of people who came here every year to visit just to spend some days as travelers, as a, as a tourist. And I know some people who are running their businesses here remotely from their country and they come visit Georgia for a month every year in the summer. Uh, they enjoy, they come to check their businesses and they enjoy also the tourism here. They enjoy the activities and the vibe of, of the summer here. So I think you are mistaken. There are a lot of people who visit Georgia many times. And the next question again from Charmaine. <clears throat> Charmaine is saying, is it possible to find work in the hotel industry in Georgia? Charmaine, it depends on your skills. If you have a high skills, if you have a very high skills, if you have a very nice CV, very uh, good experience, 
why not you can find a job but uh, in general i can say that finding a job here in georgia is not easy unless you have a special skills that will allow you to be the first candidate to any company you are applying for getting a job if you have this experience if you have this the, this power of your cv for sure you will definitely get a job so it depends on the skills and the experience you have and the, uh, the strength of your cv i can't answer like a general this is a general answer it's not a specific for you because we don't know each other yet so this is just a general answer <clears throat> um, we have another question from Jan is it possible to enter Georgia right now no Jan Jan Kowalski I think you are Polish Jan Kowalski uh, uh, I love uh, Polish people I have a lot of friends from there no Jan it's unfortunately you cannot enter to Georgia now uh, before the 1st of August the last announcement the government announced that the international the, the airports will be open for the flight for international flights from the 1st of August and there is one sad news right now it's what the government decided right now that every international traveler who will be coming to Georgia they might have be, uh, they might have to be quarantined uh, for two weeks like they might get like a quarantine for two weeks in a hotel or something so this is not the final answer from the government about this two weeks quarantine issue maybe they will change this decision in a couple of days and couple of days or couple of weeks we just have to wait until the first of august and then we will everything will be clear because here I, I actually understand their point of view like the government point of view they controlled a uh, COVID-19 here very successfully and this is this success will not last if some international travelers came and just transferred the COVID-19 spread the COVID-19 again in the country so they are afraid of this and I think they have the reasons like it's very logical behavior from them but we it's not a final decision we have to wait in a couple of days we will know exactly what is going to be for international traveler from the 1st of, of August follow the channel and follow our community on youtube and on facebook we will be updating you with all of the new information regarding this issue regarding the visit of uh, the, the entry of international travelers to georgia and what countries will be allowed and what countries will not be allowed we will update you with all of the necessary information because we already are having a big problem with this we are have already some people who scheduled a business meeting with us after doing a business consultation call they scheduled business meeting and we are waiting and they are waiting for the border to be open so we just need to wait and the second question um man abu zaki what is the cost ah oh. well uh, we have a question before for charmine do not need any medical insurance i didn't get your question charmine what is what what do you need what do you mean about medical insurance for what for entering georgia they might require you to get some covid 19 test maybe it's not confirmed yet so we need as i said to wait Man Abu Zaki, what is the cost of living in Georgia? Cost of living in Georgia, if you just, if you just uh, open your channel on YouTube, you will find a 30 minutes video of I was covering the, and making a real view from the markets here. But in general, like if you are one person, maybe $500, $600 will, have, will get you a very nice uh, apartment will make you live a monthly a good a medium or average uh, lifestyle 
with 500 600 dollar uh, a month this will be enough for one person maybe sometimes if you are a couple and you do not uh, if you do not uh, like consume a lot of stuff you do not like shopping and doing this expensive stuff 500 dollar 600 dollar dollar will be enough for you if you are a couple you will have you will have uh, from this money you will be able to rent apartment one room apartment one bedroom apartment you will have you will be able to pay your uh, invoices like bills for electricity gas and extra internet and extra you will be you will have some money for food and some money for transportation if you are going to a public uh, park if you are using a public transportation i think this 500 600 dollar will be enough for you to live an average lifestyle here in georgia <clears throat> So we have Hardeep saying, I'm from India and want to start my business in agriculture sector. Wow, interesting. We have a lot of people interested in agriculture sector. I understand, you know, agriculture sector now, people who are investing in agriculture, they are going to be very rich in the long run because now is the time of agriculture. Well, he's... His question, can I register my company and start work while on a tourist visa? Yes, you can register your company and start your work while you are on a, on a tourist visa. It's not a problem, but it depends on the length of your visa, the, the validity of your visa. How long is your visa uh, valid for? As long as it's valid, you can work you can do whatever you want here it's not a problem uh Charmaine, thank you thank you Charmaine. Uh, man man of thank you when will the airports open in georgia and how much the country is politically stable well the country now is kind of uh, as i mentioned before about the airport open it will be opened from the first of august next month 30 days from now and uh, about the economy stability, I think, or the political stability, Georgia is very stable politically because Georgia is hoping to be a member of the NATO. Georgia is uh, going to be a part of the European Union one day. And the government here is very stable since 2012, since 2013. And since then, the government is stable and the we have a op opposition and uh, we have the ruling party which is Georgian Dream Party but even if the opposition succeeded to, to become in power and to to rule this country uh, they will be ruling it on the same uh, ideology which is exist now they will not like convert it to be a communist country they will not convert it to be like uh, 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 a middle age country or a third world country, they will be working on the same ideology. They will be working in the same routes to get Georgia joined to the European Union, to get Georgia to become more and more civilized, uh, modern country. Uh, you can guess that from one of the most famous political party here is one of the mo from the opposition side. <clears throat> its name. European Georgia, European Georgia. This is the name of the party, which is one of the leading party in the opposition. And for sure, you know that the current uh, ruling party, Georgian Dream, they have a very strong connection with all of the sides. They have strong connection with the European Union, with the United States, and with Russia. So they, they are doing a very great job politically. I'm talking about politics. Here they are doing this politics as a politician, as a professional politician. They are doing a great job. <laughs> so I think it's stable, man. Dan will, well, don't really think that Georgian government is happy to see tourists today with air cancelled all flights at least till May 2021. <clears throat> well, as I mentioned, Jan, uh, it's it's very hard for Georgian government to maintain the current situation with COVID-19, uh, where they already controlled COVID-19. They already 
COVID-19 here in Georgia is under control. They are so afraid if they get international travelers, if they get international visitors who came to Georgia and who carry this virus with them and spread it again in the country. It will be a very hard situation and the country will be suffering too much. This is why they are so kind of reluctant to receive international travelers. As I said before, they are just saying this like uh, uh, they even decided to be the, to to have a two weeks quarantine for any international travelers who is coming after the first of Ju uh, the first of August. So you can imagine. I I understand what you are saying, but they have their reasons for this. <clears throat> uh, mind thank you. Me again. Uh, what is the average rent in jail or dollars that we should look? And for renting apartment for our family, two adults and two kids, small and modest. You will find, you can find apartment charmine for your family from the beginning of $350 a month. $350 can get you a very modest uh, uh, two bedroom apartment in a very, in, on an average area in Tbilisi. If you are talking about the places, the prices will be similar also in Batumi. <clears throat> uh, of course, I'm Polish. <laughs> we, you love the cartel. Okay, great, <laughs> great, Jan. Didi Madluba, Jan, Didi Madluba, everyone. Uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, watching this webinar. Thank you for being here. I'm very happy to have you. And I'm very glad that you enjoyed it. You, it was helpful for you. And see you in a very new videos, a very new series of videos starting next week. We will tell you more of information, more of secrets about investing in Georgia in the upcoming videos. Stay tuned. And as I said before, if you are really interested in doing business in Georgia and investing here, if you want to know more of the secrets, which is very special secrets, I keep it for only my customer, for the people who I do business with, go to go now to webinar, to, to go now to nomadentrepreneur.io and click become a client, fill the application, we will receive your application, we will process it, and if we are able to help you, we will ask you to schedule a call through also our platform and we will start to give you what you need and we will put you on the right track. We will be happy to help you and we will be looking for a long term business relation together. And that's it for today. Happy to have you here. Have a good day.